Elgo contacted me and wanted to send out this laser. I said, sure, go ahead, send it out. So that's all the obligation I have. They asked me if I do a video and no strings attached. Well, about 80% of all your diode lasers look identical. You can't tell who made what because they're all the same. This one, not like any other laser out there on the market. And that's what I like because I like to see the new technology. I don't want just a copy of what everybody else is doing. It says a lot about a company at the little things that they include. If they're trying to get away with just the very minimum, or are they doing things that they don't even say that are wanting to set you up for success? One thing I noticed is like every single step when you put this together was very clearly made out, but then they had spares of almost every single part screw just in case that you didn't need. They don't have to include all that extra. Now, this particular kit they sent me had the honeycomb bed and the rotary, but one of the real things that tells me how this company thinks is every single laser they sell has the air assist. Now, I have had, I can't tell you how many people contact me about the lasers that they've bought and they're unhappy with the way they work, but they don't have air assist because most companies, there's what they call extras, ILGO includes with their lasers, and this is what's going to make you successful is actually having the tools you need. And they include those with their laser. So now this is a first generation machine. It's a completely new design. Nobody else has. Well, what they have done is they've put this piece of uh, laser acrylic here to block the entire view of the laser. Whereas most of them just have a little cone right around here. And what they have done with this is that there is a fan right up in here that sucks the smoke up. And then this is a carbon filter right up inside of the machine and does like an onboard filter. You got like some carbon in there. Now, if you're just doing light engravings and things like that, this does work. But if you're doing cutting and things like that, you still have to be in a well ventilated area because it just can't handle that much smoke. But again, this is a first generation machine. And this is a very innovative design that they were trying to come up with something because almost no other diode laser, I don't think there is any other diode laser on the market that's below $1,000 that has any sort of thought of any type of filtration for the air. One of the things I love about this little machine is you can print on it however you like. And so... I like the fact that you can put G code right here on this little SD card, pop it in the side of the machine, and then use this onboard touch screen that's built right in and do all your code so you don't have to have a dedicated computer connected to the laser at all times. Right here from the home screen, all you do is you hit carving. It's gonna read what files are on your card. You pick a file and then you hit carving and then the machine starts carving. You know, so boom, boom, and then I'm carving that quick. So let's cancel that because I don't have anything in. Now to set up your material, you can go over here and hit adjust. And then if I hit like one, that turns my laser on to 1%. And that way I can move the head around to where I want it to be. So real great features there. You've got control where you can move this around, but I just reach over my hand and move the head where I need it to go. Um, but then you also have the Wi-Fi. Let's say we go to the tools. And now this is the name of the machine. So if you're going to connect with the app or on your laptop, this is going to be the name of the, uh, the network that it's sending out. And then this is the IP address. One of the great things about this is that it's got the fire sensors and you can set your sensitivity on one of my real expensive machines. If the sun comes through the window in the evenings, it will trigger the fire sensor and there's no way to go in there and to disable that. You can turn it off. If it's a project you've been working, you're right there with the machine and you don't want the fire sensor on. And then you also have the tilt sensor, which if the machine's picked up, I don't know why you want to turn that one off. But you know that is great that you have those options to turn those features on and off that in many machines, you do not have the option so quick and easy. Another way to connect is come over here to your wireless connections and then you can pull up all your wireless connections. This is what we were showing in the machine on the screen. So it's a MKS DL, you know, I guess it's probably the serial number. 
So it's going to check for the network requirements because it doesn't have internet. So if your machine pops up and says uh, connecting without internet, you know, that's what it means. So then you just open up your web browser and then the IP address that it had underneath the network, you pop that right into your machine and now you pull up the web interface. Now this right here, I can come over here and I can move the machine left or right. And then all you do is hit the buttons. But then also, if I want to come over and go to where it says SD file, I can see all the files that are on my SD card. If I want to load a file up there, I just click right here. And then I can load the file to the SD card without having to pull the SD card out of the machine and bringing it over to my laptop. And then you just scroll down to the bottom of the page here and you can hit play and that will run it. Well, this is great that you can be at your desk or whatever and actually send the files over to the laser. And if you have it set up, especially if you have like a webcam on it, you can operate this remotely. And then of course, the easiest that uh, a lot of people will use is just to connect a USB cable into the side and then you can uh, go ahead and open up, you know, whatever program, you know, light burn and connect to the laser through your light burn. Another real great thing uh, with this particular laser is that you have this owner's group. Now this uh, group is, it's about 3,000 people currently, but it could be only 10 people as long as they're active. But on this page here, they have, well, where people have got it and questions, but then they're also very helpful showing you the things that they've done but there are several members in here that have like put together the end stop kits to put together the honeycomb center in. And most of them have posted the files so you can print out yourself for free. And that is something that is very valuable is actually having a community. Like right here, this guy has got where he's uh, made where you can run your air assist um, re remotely through your light burn software. And I mean, that is... Uh, a price that you can't just actually, you know, put a number two having that support and a group that are helping you to get through the hiccups of getting that uh, laser set up. And then like with me, I had spent hours designing my little grid for the bottom and my center and uh, before I found this. And then I looked on here and somebody had already found it and uploaded the file and I could have went over here in 10 minutes and had the thing already done. Well, I've been rambling, so let me show you just what this machine will do. Now, this is some quarter inch birch. Right now we're running at real time. I'm fixing to speed it up so you don't have to get bored. But you can see what I'm talking about, how the smoke's coming out from up under. Now, I'm cutting this with one pass at real time, and this little machine does cut fabulous. I think it says cuts up to 14 millimeters in one pass but I will a lot of times cut multiple passes just so that I can get a nice clean cut. Now there's no better feeling than after you run the machine and then you reach down and pick it up and then everything falls out with nothing being stuck. So, I mean, it was just some tiny little fragments there on that one piece, uh, just a quick little bump of the finger and it fell out. And as you can see here, I can just lift these up and all these little tiny pieces out of the center just fall right out. I did some testing on some stainless steel and it turned out, you know, that you could get multiple different colors. It just depends on the speed that you're running at and how much power and really you have to cut this machine back because it doesn't take a whole lot of power to uh, do this stainless steel and it actually burned in where you could fill it with your finger. It's kind of, you know, not just a surface, but it's really digging into the metal. The fastest the machine is rated to move is 25,000 millimeters a minute. But I went ahead and I ran this and you're looking at about 8,000 millimeters a minute is the fastest of actual usable speed when you're burning. And then I also ran this on uh, just some cutting some, this was some eighth inch underlayment. And you could see how, you know, it was able to cut one pass at, you know, 500 millimeters a minute. I was able to do that quarter inch at 600 millimeters a minute. 
So at 8,000 millimeters a minute, I was able to burn this piece of bamboo and it came out fantastic. If you've seen my other reviews, you've seen this picture because it's got so much detail, I like printing it. Now this was running with the dither and I set the machine to 18,000. So that means that it's gonna be limited by the acceleration and not actually run that fast, but we're gonna get the max out of the machine. I did this at eight inches square and it only took about 30 minutes to print it out with just unbelievable detail. So I try to run the same image on a grayscale, and I mean, it just come out very smooth. So I said, you know what? This is printing this so fabulous. Let's go ahead and get some slate out here and see if we can get some 3D images going. And like, you know, you see on these real high-end machines. This first coaster, I was running at 15% power, uh, maximum 7% minimum. And then I was like, you know, it's just a little too much. I dropped back to 12% power. 4% minimum, and I mean, it is just, it's like this thing is coming off the table. I don't know if it comes across on the video, but I mean, you're scared to put your finger by it, think this thing's gonna bite you or something. I was able to cut this box out here on the left in less than 10 minutes, and then this one on the right, because there's so much detail in it, it took uh, a little bit longer, but I mean, it just, it's perfect. And right out of the box, this machine, I haven't had to do a whole lot to it. And it just has cut and engraved absolutely amazing. I normally don't mention price and I try to uh, purposely leave pricing out because that can change. And I'm buying a product for what it is, not just because of the price. But I just looked at the brand laser I bought for my first laser. Their honeycomb bed and their air assist is $270 just for those two items. You know, you're talking over $1,000 for the machine, and this machine here is the same size laser. They're both 20 watts. They're including all of the accessories, and the reason why is because they want you to actually make a good print right out of the box. You know, not trying to get the price down. They're more worried about making sure you're successful so I can really stand behind a company like that. I'm gonna put out some more videos coming up soon on this particular laser, going over the rotary. And you know, you're just not gonna find a better value. And if you've watched my channel, you know I'm about value. This at the price, I mean, it's $600 for everything. I think you get this basic laser for 400 bucks. You know, you're not gonna be this, you know, satisfied with this. So I'm putting the links down in the description. Go ahead, take a look at it. If you're in the market to upgrade your laser or are looking for a new laser, I definitely can stand behind this. Now it is a first generation machine and there may be a few little hiccups, but that's to be expected with a first generation machine. But I can only expect it's going to get better and better from here. They seem to be putting out almost monthly firmware updates. And if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments and let me know what you think.